males with Kermit syndrome and HH, there are two separate possible treatment methods. One is either hormone replacement therapy, the other is fertility treatments. Now we'll probably talk about fertility treatments later, but that's normally the use of pituitary hormones to try and get the testes to produce their own sperm and testosterone. It doesn't work for every man with Kerman syndrome, but we'll probably mention that hopefully in the video. Most men with Kerman syndrome are on lifelong hormone replacement therapy to replace the testosterone that is supposed to be produced by the testes. Because in Kerman syndrome and HH, the testes are dormant, they are very small in size and hard, and they just never have the signals from the pituitary gland to work correctly. So in, in order for the body to perform correctly, we, uh, men need quite a high level of testosterone. It's not just for sexual function, it's, all for, it's for things like energy levels, muscle development, muscle block, break, uh, hair growth, uh, breaking the voice, and the most important thing is bone density, or hardening and strengthening the bones. It's something that, that's a very important thing that we'll have to mention again later. In normal hormone replacement therapy, what you're trying to do is get the levels of testosterone, the major male hormone, up to normal physiological levels, i.e. up to the levels they should be at the age the person is at that time. So quite high at puberty, 14, 15, 16, very high, and then levels off, plateaus off through middle age, and possibly a slight decrease in late age. But the aim is to keep the testosterone level within the normal range for that population of that and the age of that person. There are a number of different methods available and they can vary from it depends which area you live in, depends if all of them are available and some work better for some people than others. So we do have a choice of which ones we use and sometimes we can ask the doctor or recommend to the doctor shall we try a different method, depends on our lifestyle or whether we react to one treatment better than the other. There are some treatments which are only for people with normal hypogonadism, where they just need a top up of the testosterone levels. But people with Kerman syndrome really need a quite reasonably high dose, just just to get them back to what their normal levels should be. There's some, so there are different different types of drugs available. There's a nasal spray. There's a buckle patch which you put in inside your gum, and there's tablets. Now what these three have in common, they're actually almost virtually useless for people with Kerman syndrome and HH because the levels are so, so low and the testosterone available is nowhere near the the amount you should get when you're, well, the levels have achieved are just nowhere near what a normal person, what a normal testosterone level should be. So they're not, they shouldn't, well, they're very rarely, if not at all, used for people with Kerman syndrome and HH. We tend to use either what we call transdermal preparations, injected preparations, or implants. Uh, transdermal preparations are either gel or patch. So either you put a small sachet of gel, so it's on the base of, back of the shoulders and back, and it absorbs through the skin very quickly, dries you in the middle too. Just put on clothes and everything's normal. Nobody, nobody needs to know you're having treatment, and you do that every day. You can also wear a patch, very similar to the nicotine patch, where you just have a new patch every day, and that gives you a very steady, both the gel and the patch give you a nice steady dose of testosterone throughout the day, but you need to change the patch every day, and you need to add the gel every day. You can have injections. Uh, one injection is a monthly injection. A common name for this is Sustanon. Now, this can be quite common in when they're trying to initiate puberty, it's where they give you injection every one month or sometimes six or eight weeks. It's a quite a low level injection to try and stimulate puberty or sometimes it's used to maintain testosterone levels. A much more common method and much, and certainly in this country, more, a much more widely used method is Nibido. And this is a three monthly injection. So instead of every month, you have inje one injection, it's quite a large volume, but you have one injection every three months. And this seems to give a nice steady dose of testosterone over the whole three month period. So you don't get very many highs and lows and it gives you a nice steady dose. There is another method, uh, implants, 
where you have this is every six months where you have pellets of testosterone in, uh, embedded deep into the thigh buttock muscle under local anaesthetic and they slowly dissolve absorb into the bloodstream and give you a nice dose of testosterone over the whole six months it doesn't work for everybody and so you do have to have a stitch where the injection where the, where the implant goes in so sometimes you get a little bit of scar tissue around there but some people find them quite help quite help quite happy with them and they last six months so then so you can just have two treatments a year and you have to you forget about it for the rest of the year so there are a different range of treatments and i've tried most of them throughout my treatment and some are better than others i like nibido at the moment because it's gives you three months good injection then forget about it it gives you nice it seems to give you good levels good good sex well like well libido sex drive and gives you gives you all the effects the testosterone should have around the body not just male sex drive there's also bone density which is an important one some people seem to like the gel because it absorbs so quickly to the skin and nobody needs to know that you're taking it but you sometimes get problems with not drying quick enough but some people seem to be happy with it but at least it gives us a little bit of choice um, so you might have to ask your doctor to see if you can have see if you can recommend a different treatment method because some may work slightly better than others some may be slightly cheaper than others and some may not be available in every country so you may have to choose between one or the two but the overall aim is to have a reasonably steady dose of testosterone throughout the time you do all the time you do not want highs and lows because that can give you emotional mood swings especially around just before the injection is due and right at the end of the injection period really you're supposed to test your testosterone levels at the mid range of the injection cycle so if you use a monthly injection you should test your testosterone at the start and at two weeks just to make sure the testosterone levels are, are adequate all the way through the cycle but sometimes you may have to adjust the cycle it for period between injections a little bit shorter to make sure you get high level or adequate levels all the way through because you don't want to you not want to have low to test road. you really need to have uh, like a, maintain a steady level um i think that's about it for time being i'm going to mention fertility treatments a bit later on but i think that's more than enough for one video okay.